And um, just before we begin, uh, Mrs. Preston, would you mind to spell your name for me so that I, I know that it's correct? <laughs> D-O-R-O-T-H-Y. P-R-E-S-T-O-N. Just like the sound. All right. <laughs> Good. Great. Okay, I'm, I'm good here. We're rolling, so uh, fire away. Okay. Uh, where and when were you born? I was born in Midland on William Street in one of Manly Chu's houses. Pardon? Why was the Chew House famous in Midland? Why was... Oh, he had a sawmill. You just move a little forward if you want. I think you guys are... Don't be shy. <laughs> and <laughs> didn't Manly Chu donate the big building for the first hospital in Midland? And then his wife donated the nice big brick house next door for the nurses to live in. Isn't that right? Pardon? Describe the iron works for us. The iron works. I, I didn't get the second word or first word. Describe? She has to uh, describe the iron works. Oh, describe the iron works. Uh, I never really seen it. I just seen it after it was done. And it was down where there's a marina there now, where the marina is around across the bay. That's where it was. But the, when we moved up to Quebec Street in the 1940s, it was still there. I don't know when they did, took it down. What are some of the fun activities you did as a child? Some of the what? What are some of the fun activities you did as a child? I don't know. I guess we skated and we went sleigh riding. I remember that. There was a field down not far from us we all went skating on, where the shoe factory is now, I think, down that Nicholson Shield, they call it. And then we went to Little Lake Park to swim and to play on the swings when we were little. My school life. Yeah. Well, I started in Regent School. We moved to the country. I went to Evergreen School. I went to Wybridge School. I went to Wyville School, back to Wybridge and Midland High, and tried my exam entrance exams at Penantang High School because Wybridge High School is in Tay, and we lived in Tiny, and Penantang's in Tiny, isn't it? So I had to go to Penetang to try my entrance exam. Um, what did you, what did your parents do for a living? My father was an engineer. My mother used to work. Um, they had a whiteware in Midland, which was a sewing place for making clothes near where um, the old Welford service station is on Young Street. That's where it was, and she worked at that before she was married, and she also worked in my grandfather's hardware store and kept his books. Um, can you tell us about your life in Midland during your time growing up, specifically in times for information about uh, the railway and lumber industry? Uh, Manly Chu had a sawmill down there, my father was the engineer at that, and that's why he had the house on William Street, which the engineers always had a house close to work, so they could walk to work if something happened. And I was born in that house. That's quite a while ago. <laughs> and then what was the rest of the question? Uh, information about the railway? The railway. The railway was here when I came here, and there was a station. There was a railway station. Where would you say that would be? Well, down around the, the boat works, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do you know where that is, the boat works? Uh, 
you know where Scully's Restaurant is? Yeah, that yeah, that, that area. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit east of that. I believe that's railway station burnt, didn't it? When they had the fire there that had so many houses. Maybe. I'm not sure. I kind of think they burnt. Didn't they build a new one? There certainly were some fires, that's for sure. Uh, Seven houses. Do you remember that? Oh, yes. Yeah, we were just teenagers. That was in the boat works, wasn't it? Isn't that where it started? Somewhere in there, I'm not sure. Yeah, in the boat works. Yes, and um, like the wind blew the embers and things on down through the town and there was different houses caught fire. There was one up on Bay Street, just up past the liquor store on that side took fire and burnt. And there was others further down. I think there were seven houses. Did you know anyone that lived in them? Yes, uh, Bud Howe lived in that house. Howe slept, like, just up from the liquor store on the right-hand side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On Bay Street? On Bay Street. Okay. Almost to the next street. Yeah, I guess he was one house off the next street. I remember seeing that. And we felt so bad because this guy worked at the factory where we did. You know, so, yeah, we all felt bad about it. Did you witness that fire happen? Yes, we were down there. My friend and I was down. Well, in Midland, when there's a fire like that, everybody's out watching. Can you tell us about the grain elevators in the building? Oh, townhouse. That's right downtown. There was a Sibco across the bay, and down on the east side of town was the Aberdeen and the Tiffin elevator. And the Aberdeen elevator had an explosion and several men were killed and injured in that. And I would be, oh, maybe 18 or 20 when that happened. So that would have been, I was born in 22, so it would be 32, 33 along in there, I guess, 34. Tell us some stories about the lumber industry in England. Uh, I knew that Manly Chu had a sawmill, and didn't Benson Brace have a sawmill too? There were a few. Yes, and there was another one too. Manly Chu's. Um, I'm trying to think of the name of the other one. Playfair. Playfair, of course, yeah. <laughs> they were all along the shore. Of course, the logs floated in. They brought the logs in from way up north on log booms, towed by a tug. Do you have some memories of the Depression you could share? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had a house in town, and my father decided this was no good. He's going to sell it and go out the country and grow some, some food for us to eat. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's where I was. Um, where, where did I have it? There, here. Oh yeah, during the Depression, my father used to take us four kids back to the bush to pick out a Christmas tree and bring it home. Um, 
although we didn't have many decorations and no Christmas gifts sometimes. This is in the Depression. I have a little we thing dish like this that cost 25 cents, and that was my Christmas present one year. And then my mother, she packed a picnic lunch on the 24th of May with a white tablecloth and, and um, a basket with picnic lunch. And she took us back to the bush and laid the tablecloth on the ground, and we sat around it and ate the picnic lunch. Uh, this would be the 24th of May. And I never forgot that. I thought, well, there they're trying to Chris celebrate Christmas, celebrate 24th of May. Yeah. Uh, do you have some memories of World War II that you can share? Pardon? Do you have any memories of World War II that you can share? Uh, not too many. Um, my brother was in the Army. My sister was in the Army. My brother-in-law, my sister's husband, was in the Army. My father was in the Army in World War I. And uh, my sister and her husband had a military wedding. They were married in Arulia. They both were stationed in Arulia and were married in Arulia. And both, all in uniform, the whole, the bridesmaids, the best man, and everybody was in uniform. I have the picture at home. Well, it was more work. Oh, yes. That's when um, they had the dress factory up there, Glenmar Frocks. And during the war, we made uniforms for the ladies in the Air Force. I think it was Air Force uniforms we made. And they took a ruler and they measured all your seams to make sure they were just the right size. Mm. Yeah, I remember that. Uniform behind you, actually, coincidentally. Yeah, and you notice the stitching is a quarter of an inch in from the edge. Right. <laughs> they go along with the ruler and <laughs> make sure you had the quarter exactly the quarter inch in from the edge. What, what would you do if it wasn't? We'd have to rip it out and fix it. <laughs> what type of hospitals did they have during your lifetime? What type of what? What type of hospitals? Oh, we had um, the old St. Andrew's Hospital. And before that, they had a hospital across the bay in Midland. The first hospital was across the bay in Midland. The second one is the old St. Andrew's, which is now a nursing home. They built the Hillcrest Nursing Home there. And then there was a brand new hospital out on near the highway. And my brother was chief engineer at the hospital for 33 years between the two hospitals. My father worked at the hospital too. My husband did for a little while. Of course, my father was an engineer. My brother was an engineer. <laughs> Lots of engineers and mechanics in the family. <laughs> I got the picture in there. My first job out, other than working for people, uh, I had a couple of occasions where I went where they had a little baby. Another one I went where a woman broke her hip and I went out to help at housework. And then, um, you know at Bomb Beach they have that hamburger stand? That was one of my first jobs working at a hamburger stand. And they thought I was pretty good because I knew how to stack up the dishes and wash them. <laughs> and then I went from there to Glenmar Frocks. And I worked in a store one time, too, a grocery store. But sewing was my specialty. I liked sewing. How long did you do that? Pardon? How long did you do that? Oh, I quit about... Well, you see, I worked there before I was married, and then I went back, and my husband was off work. I went back to work, and then the last, last time I went back, I stayed back for quite a few years. 
And imagine the kids were teenagers then, so I was able to not worry about them getting home from school. And uh, I spent all my life, I went back and forth. Whenever I was out of a job, <laughs> they'd always take me back. That's yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> That's handy. Yeah. Well, once you got, I think, a reputation, and they know you didn't steal and all this stuff, eh? You know? Yeah. <laughs> that's something on the boats. You get a guy on the boat that's rifling through somebody else's stuff. It's not very nice, you know. So what's the next one? We understand you have a story about a plane landing by mistake in Midland. What yes. Happened? Yeah. What happened? Uh, my mother wrote a letter to my father, and she said they thought when they seen the elevators, they were near Collingwood, and they thought they'd go down there into Camp Borden. But they must have got strayed somewhere, but the land in Midland. I got that picture. Have you seen it? You want to see it? You have it with you? Oh, yeah. I've got lots of pictures with me. So they thought they were in Collingwood, but they were in Midland. That's, is that why they? Yeah, they thought they were in Collingwood and near Camp Borden. Oh. That's Glenmar Frost. Where is that building? That's the old Manly Street School up there that they fixed up and the guy was going to make, so. make into apartments. And Glenmar Frox was upstairs, and Fabulous Farmals was downstairs. And I graduated. I think eventually uh, Glenmar Frox closed, and it went to all formal clothes, wedding dresses and long dresses and stuff. Worked there, too, at that. See anybody you know? <laughs> Some names are on the back. I think that would be around... 1936, 37 along in there. You see any names you know? Yeah. Well, yours. <laughs> that plane landed um, uh, out on King Street, on that side of the road, in a field, at that time. Right. The old highway used to make a curve like this, and there was a service station there. And this is where this landed. And how close? That's good. Looks like everybody in town came out to look. Yes, walked. Yeah, that's a lot of these people I still know and still run into. That's me right there. <laughs> oh, what's... I got a bunch of pictures in here of different things. I don't know if you're interested in them or not. Oh, here's more. <laughs> one's my great grandfather, one's my grandfather. Okay. This is my mother's Sunday school class in the Baptist church. My mother is great. Um, <laughs> From the end? Uh, no, let's see. Right here, and her little sister. 
No, I don't think her sister. Oh, yeah, her sister Olivia is right there. That's my sister in a uniform. Oh, like these ones. Yeah, huh? And this is the group that, um, thank you. Okay. This is the group she was with in Aurelia. And they were stationed up in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan during the war and never got home for Christmas. I think this is up the lake somewhere. Not just too sure on that. Looks like it. Oh, there's the hamburger place I worked in. This is in the paper just a, while, a few days ago. Still there. Is that where the arcade is now? At the end of Long Beach there? Yeah. There was a, a woman who worked this past summer, and she worked at the hamburger stand. And Is that right? Yeah, just coincidence. So. Yeah. That's my grandfather, McLean, and my great-grandfather, McLean. They're, um, he came from England with his wife as a bride and settled down near Sunderland. Do you know where Sunderland is, down past Aurelia? You see the hamburger joint there? That's where <laughs> I still have good hamburgers. Yeah, still selling hamburgers. Still the same place. Okay. So what's uh, the next question you've got here? Um, do you have any other details you would like to share? About life? I don't know. Oh yes, when we were kids, we were picking strawberries and picking raspberries. One old farmer came down and he said he would hire us kids to pick potatoes if we'd pick potatoes. This was during the war when men were scarce. So we went and picked potatoes. That was a hard job. The potatoes were heavy in a pail and you had to cart them up so far, eh? And I worked in a grocery store in Glenmar. Oh yeah, we made uh, baby clothes too at Glenmar and and catalog dresses for Eaton's catalog. Yeah. And then later read his famous formals. Oh yeah, my younger brother joined him, um, was in the act of service, and he was stationed in British Columbia. And they're training them to fight the Japanese but the war ended in August the 6th, and he would have turned 21 on the 30th of August, old enough to be sent overseas. He was just, just, yeah. I still remember my mother packing that Christmas lunch, and you know we enjoyed it. Sat down on the ground, <laughs> white tablecloth. <laughs> had it written down here. Um, I think my, is a good set of manners gets you a long way in this world. You know, instead of arguing with a person, say, oh, I'll walk away from it, you know. It gets you a long way in this world. And you always have friends. If you don't get mad and tell them off, you have friends. You know, it's easier to, say, oh, I don't like that, or I don't believe that, but if you say, oh, okay, walk away from it, you know, and keep your friends. You need them. When you get old, you need them worse. <laughs> what else have you got? 
Is that it? Excellent. Well, now that you've read all your questions and you've heard the answers, is there anything else you'd like to ask now that you for follow-up questions? So I, I had a question. You mentioned earlier about all the different schools you went to. Yes. Why did you go to so many different schools? <laughs> <laughs> well, when my father went to the country, this he rented this run place, and it wasn't very big. It was only four rooms, and it was four kids of us. It was a pretty small house. And then he, this fellow had a thrashing machine. And my father got this thrashing machine going and run it. So this man, as soon as um, a house became available, he said, hey, I know where you can run a better house. And then a little bit later, <laughs> that's when we went from Evergreen to Wybridge. And then a little bit later, um, Evergreen to Wybridge. Then he had a place out near Wyville with a nice cement block house and a nice barn and everything. He owned that and he's going to rent that to us. That was fine. But then a couple got married and wanted to buy it. So we had to move back to Wybridge. <laughs> so, so then, of course, Midland High. Yeah, you went to high school. A couple of years. My mother had a few years. My mother went to high school and then high school, same high school as I did. And then my children and grandchildren, when they got to public school, they went to that school too. Yeah, that school was built when my grandfather first came here. That, that school was quite old, I'm not just sure. The one uh, over by Young Street, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So they tore down a couple of years ago. That's right, yeah. yeah. My grandfather was on council. And he made sure he was a builder, eh? And he made sure there was a good foundation under it. Well, when they tore it down, I guess they found up. <laughs> because it stood up for years. Yeah. So is there anything else you want to ask about? Uh, have you lived in this area your whole life? Yes. Never got rich enough to get <laughs> to move away. <laughs> That's what I always used to tell them. And I never really... Um, I went down to my daughter's when she, she had a baby that was sick for three weeks, and that's the first time I was ever away from home that much, for three weeks. How many kids do you have? I have three, two boys and a girl. And, it, and do they live around here as well still? Yes, so both boys live here, but the girl lives in Trenton. Okay. Yeah. Um, he was connected to Air Force and Batashu in Trenton. He's an engineer too. <laughs> of engineers. Yeah. <laughs> My mother used to say, uh, Grandma Bush would say, oh, they're at it again. Apparently, my grandfather was an engineer and the four boys were all engineers. Well, of course, you learn what the father teaches you, eh? And they... Uh, put that railroad end up through there in Lovering. And also they worked on um, first marine, you know, takes the boats over. Right, yeah, okay. yeah, what do they call it now? Uh, big chute? No. Big chute, no, big marine railway. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the first marine railway that was built, they worked on that. That's quite a while ago. Yeah. Time a little, we're jumping all over the place, I know, but um, you mentioned the, the chews. Yes. You were, you, I, is it your, you said your father worked for the chews? My father. Right. Do you remember the chews? No. People, no? no, you see, I was born down there, so. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Do you have any early memories or anything of the chews? Mm -hmm. But uh, they, uh, but, so you were born in the chew house? The, it, they had a house for their employees, see? Eh? Okay, yes. Yes, in lumber mills, the engineer always had a house close to to work, eh? Mm -hmm. So if they needed them, walking distance. Yeah. And you know that um, the people that had the planing mills, the one, the father there, the, the one that owns it now, he always lived on 3rd Street within walking distance of the planing mill. Yeah, and 
if you worked in a bank or something, you had to be within walking distance of the bank if you were a bank manager. This was a specific, years ago, eh? Right. You know, now it's different. You call a taxi if a car don't go. Right. <laughs> so is there any of those pictures you want to know what is? It's pretty interesting. I didn't know that uh, that, that, that schoolhouse had, was used for the, uh, for anything other than a school. I, which one is that? Uh, the one that you, you had the picture of everybody in front of there. Um, oh, yeah. that My yeah. brother went to that school. That was Manly Street School. Right. Years ago. And then apparently they didn't have enough children to fill the two schools, so they closed Manly Street School. And then these people, I don't know whether they rented and then bought it or what. I'm not sure. It but certainly looks different now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> But he, he's, just, he's still not got apartments yet, eh? He's bound he's going to get apartments in that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I remember I used to walk past it on the way home from school when I was younger, and at that time it was abandoned and the, all the windows were broken and, yes. and everything. And so in my mind, I always think of that, and then they, you know, they changed it into... Oh, yeah, even when it was occupied, we'd come to work and there'd be a window broken. Uh, so many windows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty tempting. Yeah. Who's this lady in the picture? That's Hazel Healy. She was a school teacher in Midland. She taught us. She's a friend of my mother's and she taught us in Regent School. Mm -hmm. Anything else? You went to Regent School? I went to Regent, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. What was it like when you were there? Well, it was almost new. Yeah. Yeah. And we had a new school at Wyville, too. When I went to Wyville, it was a new school. The old school was further down the highway, below Wybridge, down around the 4th or something. Concession. That's my sister. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, one of those uniforms. Oh, yeah, she's t stationed in Prince Albert. Didn't get home for Christmas. Oh, yeah. Always be polite and tell the truth. It gets you a long way in this world. <laughs> you want to read those notes I wrote? Answers to some of your questions? <laughs> I don't know. I think we pretty much went through everything. Uh, my grandfather McLean came here, I would say, as a young man. I think my mother was five years old when they moved up here. And he built a lot of houses in town, and he worked on the Presbyterian Church. And the Presbyterian Church in Ellenville, he helped build that too. And a lot of houses in Midland he built. Quite a few houses. He'd build one house, and then neighbors come in and see it, and they'd want one the same. And then one would want one instead of the door on this side, they wanted it on this side. <laughs> yeah, he's built a lot of houses in town. My father-in-law built houses in town, too. Cecil Preston, my father-in-law. Oh, you know where Les Davison lives? No, I don't. Oh. And uh, he built several houses. You see anything interesting you want to ask about? Um, where was this taken? This was what they used to, to uh, that's a sawmill in, uh, that one you have in your hand is a sawmill at Coldwater. This is a machine they used with the boom on for breaking the rocks 
for um, for putting the marine railway through and also the railroad. They worked on the railroad too. It came up through there to Midland. The railroad at one time used to go right down to the end of the docks and it used to go right over to the townhouse elevator at one time. And that was, uh, it's a log boom. You see the boom? The boom went down and smashed the locks. I don't know, I'm not too sure if that's my father or not. I think maybe it is. I think it is, I'm not dead sure. Uh, somebody said that's still up there in the bush someplace. Now it was a cold water reunion one time where he took that picture of and they said they thought that was still up there in the bush, but my father's people they got land for work for clearing it. Yeah. So they were, they were paid in land rather than in cash? Yes. What they call it, crown land? Yeah, because uh, his grandmother or something was United Empire Loyalists, so then they got, they like when states in Canada was sort of, they stayed in Canada, they come back into Canada and stayed in Canada, so you, they called them United Empire Loyalists. And my great-grandfather, he was a pioneer of Upper Canada settling. And my grandfather McLean, he lived not far from there. That's down around Blue Aurelia. Beaverton, that area. You know where Beaverton is? Is hmm? it about, the family has a long history in Simcoe County then? Yes. <laughs> yes. My father's people, they were in um, Wolf Island at off of Kingston. You know where Wolf and Simcoe Island is? Not too sure. Some, some islands right off of Kingston there. Yes. Yeah. I don't know exactly where, but. Well, you just get on the ferry and you take you over. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where they were? That's where my father's people lived before they came up here. I don't know just how he met my grandmother because she was from um, the name of that place. Neither ski hills there. Uh, what the heck's the name of that? Uh, around here? Yeah, down. Like Moonstone? Or yeah. Out. Yeah. Sometimes these names don't come to you. To us all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Moonstone, Mount St. Louis area is where she was come from. Okay. But her parents, she came from Ireland. Her parents came from Ireland. My mother's parents came from Scotland. And my grandmother, McLean, came from England. And my grandfather, Bush, he came from Oh, Norwegian or one of those countries. But it's a German name, B-U-S-C-H. But that don't necessarily mean you're born in Germany, you know. But uh, it's a German name, eh? So it wasn't, didn't go over too good during the war. <laughs> yeah. That's the way it went, eh? Of course, we got to hate the Germans, and now <laughs> they're all with us. But they're good people, you know. But it's just like the last war, this one that's gone on for 10 years. Look at that. That's a long time, 10 years fighting. Yeah. yeah. But there wasn't so many people lost in this war as there was in the other wars. Yeah. You still think of the guys that went overseas, you know? Kids you used to go to school with. Yeah. Quite a few of them. 
So anything else you want to know? <laughs> That's pretty good, what you guys think. Um, have you ever traveled anywhere? Oh. Pardon? Have you ever traveled anywhere? Do I travel anymore? Have you ever traveled anywhere before? No, just to the States uh, in, uh, just to Florida, mostly, and the East Coast. Never made it to the West Coast. Made it to the East Coast, camped along the way. It was an enjoyable trip, but never been out of the country. I never had much desire, but one thing I would like to go and see if I ever got the opportunity is where my grandmother, my mother-in-law was born in England. She was one of the home kids that they sent over here. Nine years, six or nine years old, you know, and one time they sent her on a train from Peterborough to Wybridge by herself with her little box of goodies and all by herself, nine years old. I think that's, I think that's terrible, you know, but there was many of them. There's lots of them, hundreds. But I suppose, you know, there wasn't much in England for them in Canada. See, a lot of people didn't have children. They, there was, when they came here, there's nobody, you might say. You couldn't get anybody to help you do anything. So, of course, these kids, they just put them to work. One little guy was so scared of cows. It seems so funny now when you think of it. He was scared of cows. Yeah. I guess they're big. <laughs> yeah. I've got the book, The Little Immigrants. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a very sad, sad thing. And my neighbor, he, he was a, one of those immigrants, too. Yeah. But that's one place I kind of think I'd like to go and see where she came from, sort of, you know. I've got it on a map in England, northern England. Yeah, so I'm English, Irish, Scotch, and Dutch, so my mother used to say. <laughs> yeah, I'm a good mixture. <laughs> Well, where they all came from, me. Eh? Grandfather McLean came from Scotland, and my grand, my grand, my father's parents came from Ireland. His mother came from Ireland. England, Irish, Scots. Um, Nor have you been seen on the maps Norwegian with the. Um, Norway with the the ocean goes away in. Well, that's where they got on the boat and come over. Okay. I'm like my father's people, eh, years ago. And this You're talking 200 years ago. And come down through the States, and in the States they had trouble in the States, and they finally ended up at Markham. Yeah. Yeah, we went down to that 200th reunion. Yeah. Oh, they had uh, old, um, the old covered wagons and all this stuff and dishes and different things that people had. It was very interesting, I thought. Yeah. I got that, I got that, uh, you know, um, what do you call a movie? Mm -hmm. You run through your VCR? Oh, yeah. yeah, I got that too. I'm into this history bit. <laughs> I don't know what the kids will do with it. Maybe burn it all. <laughs> I'm not sure they'll keep it or not. But I have some people that's interested in the family history, and I said, well, come and see me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, important. it's important to keep it. Pardon? It's important. To oh, of course it is, to know where you come from. Yeah. And you've got an accent. Somebody said, well, you've got a funny accent. Well, I never thought I had, but <laughs> I guess I have. Yeah. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, everybody sounds funny to somebody else, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What uniform is that one? This one? Oh, is that the kilt? No. Uh, this is the, uh, the Toronto Scots. Oh, uh, yeah. The Toronto Scottish right? Yeah, I'm, it's got the uh, 
We call it on the front there. I think my son-in-law was in, um, my brother-in-law was in uh, Queen's Own Rifles. Yeah, that's a Scottish thing, isn't it? Yeah, he was overseas. I never seen one just like that before. With the big sport on the front? No, I didn't see that yeah. before. Pretty neat. This was uh, regular army. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this was the dress uniform. That was fatigues and this was dress uniform, wasn't it? I think so. I think battle dress, yeah. That's yeah. Right, yeah. I don't look very comfortable, but uh, everybody wore them. <laughs> well, they were wool, they were warm, I guess. Mm -hmm. That's true, they were quite cold. Right. Well, you guys ready to right, they have any questions? Yeah. Okay. So, I always tell everybody when I turn it on and when I turn it off. So, I'm about to turn it off. So, if you have anything, uh, if you have any revel uh, revelations, let me know and I'll turn it back on. <laughs>